And one of the ways you keep us safe is by tracking terrorist groups and collecting the information we need to stop those attacks. Our intelligence agencies historically disrupt around one terrorist plot a year. But this year, you have prevented seven such plots. And it's right that we choose to invest in our cyber defences, even at a time when we must cut other budgets. For our country, defending our citizens from hostile powers, criminals or terrorists, the internet represents a critical axis of potential vulnerability. From our banks to our cars, our military to our schools, whatever is online is also a target. ISIL's murderous brutality has a strong digital element. At a time when so many others are using the internet to enhance freedom and give expression to liberal values and creativity, they are using it for evil. Let's be clear. ISIL are already using the internet for hideous propaganda purposes, for radicalization, for operational planning too. They have not so far been able to use it to kill people by attacking our infrastructure through cyber attack. They do not yet have that capability, but we know they want it, and we know they're doing their best to build it. So when we talk about tackling ISIL, that means tackling their cyber threat, as well as the threat of their guns and their bombs and their knives. And at the heart of cybersecurity is a painful asymmetry between attack and defense. It is easier and cheaper to attack a network than it is to defend it. And the truth is that this asymmetry is growing. And all this is reflected in the cyber breaches that we see reported with increasing frequency and increasing severity. Last summer, GCHQ dealt with 100 cyber national security incidents per month. This summer, the figure was 200 a month. Each of these attacks damages companies, their customers, and the public's trust in our collective ability to keep their data and their privacy safe. 